This is the sixth in a series of modules about productive tutoring techniques. You, the viewer, will have an opportunity to see actual tutors handling real tutoring situations. These scenes will benefit you the most if you take time to think about and discuss what you see. Throughout this module, this screen will appear as a prompt for reflection and discussion. Questioning has two major functions in tutoring, diagnosis and teaching. Usually students do not or cannot explain exactly what they know and don't know, so tutors ask questions to locate the source of the confusion. Tutors may also use questions to lead students toward correct ideas and applications. To effectively use questions for either purpose, tutors must employ good listening skills. Questions may be classified as closed-ended or open-ended. Both types of questions are useful in tutoring, but they elicit different kinds of responses. Closed-ended questions are those which may be answered with only a word or a phrase. Tutors should avoid asking a question in a closed-ended form when they want students to elaborate. Open-ended questions generally require more thought and more words to answer, and they are more useful in getting students to verbalize their ideas. So here it's telling you why this one couldn't react, and what is it telling you? It's the no benzylic hydrogens. So, so I guess if the C, that the benzylic carbon, if it's not um, connected to any hydrogens, it can't go through that reaction. Right. So, so how would you start? Um, well, you get the molarity, or the number of moles of the H3. Be helpful. Here, Katie probes her students' reasoning with an open-ended question. Okay, why is it there that you are assuming that all of your um, copper sulfate is being converted to your um, new product? What tipped you off? Because um, the KF is real high. Right. Okay. That's pr it's pretty much essentially what it's going to be for all like complex ions, right? Right. I just they're, have to make sure I know what a complex ion is. Right. Um, and just always remember that it's a metal surrounded mm -hmm. by... And then we deal with KF right. as well. An open-ended question may be used in combination with a closed-ended question, as seen here. Right. So which one here is your limiting uh, reagent? I don't know. Let's see. And they give you this one in molarity already. Mm-hmm. Um, That one's going to be limiting reagent. Exactly. That's right. So and how could you tell that? Because it's a smaller number. Good. All right. Good, open-ended questions often result in the student asking questions back to the tutor. On such occasions, the tutor learns more about what the student does and does not know. Uh, how do you think you're going to start? Okay. I figure if I have, they want above the x direction. Okay. Would I need to find the velocity in the, the x and the y? Break it up? Let's see some more examples of open-ended questions. What are you working on? On a report on a research article on memory and cognition that I have to do for my psychology class. Uh -huh. And this is what it looks like. I wrote it, and as I told you before, it was like hard as heck to understand, so I think pretty much I covered what I wanted to say. And we could put it in vector form by doing what? How would we put this parameterization into vector form? Uh, it's just like Q sine D and theta. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and then you'd add them all up. Okay, since your x is in your exponent, what do you have to do in order to solve for x? Why is that one? Why did you subtract that one? Compute f of f of f to the negative one of two. Tell me in words what that's saying. Plug two in where the x is. Of what? Negative one. Tutors often use questions that tap into different levels of knowledge as classified by Bloom's taxonomy, particularly at the memory, comprehension, and application levels. Comprehension and application questions are generally open-ended,
because students usually will have to think and speak at length to explain concepts and how they are applied. On the other hand, memory or recall questions are usually closed-ended. Memory level questions are used by tutors to see if the student knows the details needed to form larger concepts and work problems. Let's see some examples. What's the acceleration due to gravity? Uh, negative 9.8. Okay. What's the definition of a Lewis acid? Um, so that has the ability to accept electrons. Right. Okay, what does I stand for? No clue. Oh, negative 1. The square root, no, the square root, of, square root of negative 1. What is the quadratic formula? Plus or minus b. b plus or minus. It's negative b. Negative b. So this chlorine will have, it's all by itself. It has all okay. these electrons around it. Right. What's the charge on that going to be? The uh, negative 1. Yep. Enviar. To Enviar. Enviar. Firmar su signo de su nombre. It's a sign. Sí. Um, Buzón. Si tú tienes una eh, un carta, ¿dónde probaste? Mailbox. Mail, mail a comprehension level question requires the student to explain a concept or form a short reply that demonstrates comprehension of the concept. The energy input is required to break chemical bonds. What does that mean? Okay. Energy input. What would you think mm -hmm. that would mean? Your work. Right. Okay. What is, it, what, what, what is this work going to do? Um, it's going to break the bonds. So what does it mean if something is oxidized? It means that um, it gains an electron. Observe Marsha's reaction when her student has difficulty with the question phrased at the comprehension level. After waiting and observing the student, Marsha rephrases the question at the memory level. I plus 8.71J. Mm -hmm. Now what is that? Over. This is the new, this is the velocity when it's coming to stop. Is the, okay. If you have a final minus original, it's a change right so you want to say that's delta v okay right so the change in velocity is mm -hmm. this much mm -hmm. let's look at some other examples of comprehension level questions but what happened to the nitrogen and going from no3 to no um it lost electrons no it gained do you still Okay, All so right, so is O just negative two? Oh, isn't it still negative two? All right, and this has to be neutral, so this is going to be two. Right. All right. So if it went from five plus five to, to plus two, what happened to it? It um it it gained electrons. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, they were individually studied. What does that mean? Well, I mean there was, you know, every time the the experiment was going on, there were alone in their structure, and it's not a big group thing. I mean, even looking at the answer that they give there, what difference did the triple bond make? It just, it's going to have two double bonds on mm -hmm. it, so this, this one will stay exactly where it is. It'll just, this one will go here, mm -hmm. and then this one will go here, and this one will, yep. Okay. What is the domain? What is the range? What's like a definition? Doesn't have to be the word for word book definition, but what is that? The domain is what x equals. Mm-hmm. The range is what y equals. Right. An application level question requires the student to demonstrate the correct use of a concept or solution method in a problem situation. And you want to find out where that line crosses the x-axis. How would you do that? Solve for x. Yeah. So if you want to find out in this equation, like where, where it crosses the x-axis, how would you do that? Just solve for x again. Yeah. But it says there's more than one zero, so there's more than one answer for x. Mm -hmm. Just set it equals zero. Yeah. What other form can you change it to that would make it easier to solve for x? You can say x to the fifth equals e5. Right. What would you think would come into play if we had, say, a tert butyl group here? Um the sterics effects, mm -hmm. so this 
if it was sticking up, it would be harder to get to because this is also sticking up, so it would need to be sticking down. Yep. So this would be the major. Mm -hmm. This would be the minor. What would have to happen for those two carbons to form a double bond? We'd have to lose the hydrogen. Say if you wanted to find out how much was left, how much, much um, left? how much mm -hmm. copper was left, how would you go about doing that? You would subtract uh, the initial right. from the equilibrium. Good. All right. That's exactly it. Questions can be used to lead students to the correct concept. This technique, called Socratic questioning, is preferable to lecturing because it builds on the student's own ideas. Okay. Well, what's the difference between this and, um, say, this one? It has mm -hmm. the um, double bond, the alternate double bonds. Right. So, so why can't it add here? Because it's more, it's got already got four bonds to it, so right. it's got to add over here. What does it tell you? It doesn't work. Right. So, what's your other method for doing? Quadratic. Yeah. So I'll just plug this into the quadratic equation. Mm -hmm. So if copper two plus is gaining two electrons, what's happening to it? It's being uh, reduced. Right. So which is the oxidizing agent and which is the reduction agent? Um, this is the oxidizing agent and this right. is the reduction agent. Good. It's just some strange stuff. Where your oxygen is going to be on this? It can't be there, there. There or there, so it has to be here. Mm -hmm. And on this one, it can't be there. 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 Mm. This one can't have an oxygen here. And can't beneath have it. Her. And beneath her, right? Where can it have an oxygen, and what would it be? It can have one here, and it'd be an an alcohol. Right. Okay, you're right. It's a problem with the verb. What is the what? It. Tell me about the verb. When is this taking place? In the past. Okay, in the past. Is it something that it's that's continuing? Started in the past and continues, or something that took it's place done. one specific time? It's one done. One specific time, yeah. Okay, so what verb form do you want there? Has. Mm, what would has mean? I don't know. I'm still, like, confused on that part. It would be has, have, had, had proposed. Would it be had? You're guessing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell uh, me why. Uh, would it be? Read it. In 1993, Tanaka and Farah. Propose. Propose would be fine. No, no thing. Propose a holistic approach. And no has, had, or whatnot. Okay. Why not? Um. Because it's done, and we don't. They have finished the process. Tutors use questions both for diagnosis and teaching. Open-ended questions are generally better than closed-ended questions in getting students to verbalize their ideas. Tutors can use Bloom's taxonomy to help them ask questions at the appropriate cognitive levels. Good tutors often use Socratic questioning to lead students to the correct ideas. When tutors use Socratic questionings, students learn that they possess the knowledge needed to find their own answers.